Today's lecture covers molecular weight and its importance in thermoplastic resins. So what we're going to cover today is the role of molecular weight in polymers, uh, specifically thermoplastic resins. We're going to talk about monodispersity, polydispersity, uh, molecular weight distribution, uh, or polydispersity index. And then I'm going to define uh, very briefly these types of average molecular weight. Number average molecular weight, weight average molecular weight, and I'll touch on briefly viscosity average and Z average molecular weight. The big ones that are really focused on by polymer scientists are number average and weight average molecular weight because those are the two that contribute to polydispersity index. And that is really one of the biggest things when it comes to uh, thermoplastic processing that you have to understand. So here are some definitions. A monodispersed polymer is when a polymer has molecules of only one molecular mass present. So when it comes to small molecules, say like water or sodium chloride or something like that, those only have one molecular mass. I believe water is uh, 18. But polymers themselves, because they have many different units, uh, can have a range of molecular weights within the same material. Uh, so a monodispersed polymer has only one size of molecules. In that entire batch, there's only one size of molecules. And that's typically only seen with natural processes. Uh, for example, the enzymes in your body are always the same molecular weight. If they weren't, that would be a big problem. Uh, certain proteins, always the same molecular weight. Uh, when it comes to man-made polymers, we're usually looking at a polydispersed polymer. So within a sample, the polymer molecules are over a wide range of molecular masses. And this is very characteristic of man-made polymeric materials versus natural materials, which are typically monodispersed. Most plastics are polydispersed polymers, and that's actually good for their properties. So to review molecular weight, uh, molecular weight estimates the average length of the polymer chain that's present in a sample. Uh, so this is similar to the DP, or degree of polymerization. Molecular weight, equ MW, equals M the molecular weight of the monomer times the DP. So what does that mean? So the overall molecular weight of a polymer chain uh, is, if it's 100,000 for polystyrene, then the degree of polymerization is about 1,000 because the weight of an individual styrene monomer is about 104. So if it's 50,000 for polyethylene, the degree of polymerization is actually higher because the molecular mass of polyethylene is lower. So molecular weight equals the molecular weight of the monomer unit times the degree of polymerization, or how many monomer units have added together. Molecular weight can be measured a variety of different ways. Uh, osmometry, light scattering, uh, solution viscosity, uh, oftentimes we do this by um, chromatography, so size exclusion chromatography is one we often see. Uh, and when we're talking about polydispersity, we are talking about the weight average molecular weight, or M sub W, versus the number average molecular weight, or M sub N. And polydispersity is a ratio of the weight average molecular weight, or M sub W, divided by M sub N. So when you're looking at, say, uh, an SEC curve, which is shown here, uh, you almost always see the M sub N at lower molecular weight versus the M sub W, which is always at higher molecular weight. And the ratio of those is M sub W divided by M sub N. That equals polydispersity. Uh, we're not really going to calculate the average molecular weight, but this is some nomenclature, so I'm not really going to go very deep into that. Uh, we're not going to do this particular chromatography example, but this is uh, basically shows the plot of m molecules of each mass within a particular sample. And this is how number average molecular weight is calculated based on that uh, data. So number average molecular weight is the sum is just a straight average. You take all of the molecules present, you divide it by that. So in this case, M sub N is 500,000. Keep that in mind. So in this case, same sample, but the weight average molecular weight uh, is 531 divided by 600. So in this particular sample, keep those two numbers in mind. So viscosity average molecular weight uh, is typically uh, in between those two. Uh, it is not often used in a lot of the, uh, you have to have very, very high molecular weight polymers for viscosity average molecular weight. But what I will point out from this particular slide is that you should understand this relationship. 
m sub z is larger than m sub w, which is larger than m sub v, which is larger than m sub n. So this is something that you will see again on, say, quizzes or exams. So keep this kind of in mind. Viscosity average molecular weight uh, is often done by measuring the viscosity of a sample, and it is done uh, using the mark Wink equation. That's what this is shown here. Uh, K prime are, and A are solvent constants, and then this is the intrinsic viscosity. You can actually measure this using very, very simple, no electricity required uh, uh, instrumentation and a hot water bath, and so this is typically done in a lot of early polymer chemistry laboratories uh, if you're studying polymer chemistry. The z-average molecular weight, again, is not typically used uh, when we're talking about thermoplastics. This is often done uh, so with ultracentrifugation and sedimentation and is applied to polymers with, again, much higher molecular weight than we would be talking about here. So calling back to those previous numbers that we saw, all of those, those big tables, those big tables generated an m sub n of 500,000 grams per mole. And those tables, when calculating m sub w, uh, got a weight average molecular weight of 531,600 grams per mole. So this is the same sample, we're just calculating the molecular weight differently. So uh, this is number average molecular weight, this is weight average molecular weight, and polydispersity index is the weight average m sub w divided by the number average m sub n molecular weight. So when we're taking these two numbers, the polydispersity index equals 1.063. This is very typical for man-made polymers. Polydispersity indexes is most always greater than one. In other words, the weight average is greater than the number average. And a lot of the times, the polydispersity index is somewhere around 2 to 2.5. So this is, again, a, graph a graphical representation of m sub n versus m sub w. This is the amount of the polymer on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we have molecular weight. So once again, the take-home message here is that m sub w is larger than m sub n almost always. So here we have a representation of the effect of catalyst on molecular weight. This is polyethylene, but this is done uh, through a wide variety of different catalysis methods. So here we have weight percent versus molecular weight. So here we have a conventional catalyst versus a ziegler natta catalyst versus a metallocene catalyst. And what we see here is a, a broadening or a narrowing of the molecular weight based on the catalysis method that's used to make the polymer in the first place. So conventional is probably, we're probably talking about free radical polymerization, ziegler nat. so we have a low density product here. ziegler nat is to make high density and then metallocene is to make high density as well, with just a different technology. So uh, polymerization catalyst has an effect on the molecular weight of the product. Uh, one of the things that's also Im uh, important to point out is that molecular weight distribution uh, or the polydispersity index is something that often comes into play when you're looking at different grades of uh, uh, plastic formulations. Uh, when it comes to uh, injection molding, your polydispersity index is often narrower, and when it comes to blow molding, your polydispersity index is often wider. Uh, for blow molding, you want the uh, paracin, especially uh, extrusion blow molding, you want your paracin to kind of hold together and have form. And for that, you need a wide variety of molecules at all different shape, all different sizes, so it has uh, a better form. Whereas injection molding, you want your uh, material to melt relatively at the same temperature uh, f so that it's all relatively liquid when you go to inject. So uh, polydispersity index can be made wider or narrower for the same material. Uh, based on different catalysis, based on different stages of polymerization. So that's really what I want you to take home from this one, is how to calculate polydispersity index, m sub w divided by m sub n, uh, the fact that m sub w is almost always larger than m sub n, and then to keep this relationship in mind. Uh, m sub z is greater than m sub w, which is greater than m sub v, which is greater than m sub n. So those are kind of the things that you should be uh, looking at when it comes to the quiz for this particular lecture. So uh, following this, please take your quiz for molecular weight, and then we will move on to crystallinity. Thank you.